Hello and welcome to my presentation. My name is Arvid Ender Seidlitz. I am PhD student at the Leibniz Institute for Crystal Growth in Berlin. And today I'm going to talk about the development of a Python based crystal growth simulation framework. The content of my presentation will be first a short motivation, then I will talk about the model development in general the transient heat transfer simulation, which is the current state of the model. Afterwards, I will come to the planned coupling to open form, which will be the next step in the model development. And in the end, there will be a short conclusion. Let's start with the motivation. Crystalline materials are the basis of many modern technologies, such as computed chips and solar cells, which are both produced from silicon single crystals. One of the main production methods for these crystals is the Chokhalsky process, working in such furnaces. Of course, it's very interesting to simulate this process to increase, for example, the crystal quality and the production output. But the validation of these complex simulations is very difficult because it's very hard to measure inside these furnaces. Um, one problem is the very high temperature with for silicon a melting point of 1114 degrees Celsius and the very high requirements on the purity. That's why in the NemoCRIS project at Leibniz Institute for Crystal Growth, we develop a model experiment of the Chokhalsky process using, for example, tin as a model material with a lower melting point of 232 degrees Celsius and relaxed environmental conditions. For example, we can perform the whole growth process with the open door at atmospheric conditions. Here you can see a time-lapse video of the growth in our model experiment with the seed crystal already dipped into the melt which is now pulled upwards, first with 4 mm per minute and now with 8 mm per minute while rotating it with one revolution per minute. Um, yeah, there's a crystal growing below the seed. Looking at the physics, you can see that there are many processes involved into the crystal growth process. For example, thermal stresses inside the crystal, the gas and the melt flow, the electromagnetism of the induction heating, and of course the heat transfer and the phase change. From a numerical point of view, this is challenging because of the complex coupling um, of the different physics, the moving geometries, and the different time scales involved into this process with a very high flow velocities compared to the low growth velocity of the crystal. From a modeling point of view, this is challenging because of the mostly missing in situ measurements for validation. And in our project, we took the challenge to implement the whole simulation in open source software. And now coming to the model development. My colleague Kaspers presented at the Precise Workshop last year already showed this, um, which is an overview of the software used in crystal growth, created for one of the biggest crystal growth workshops. Um, on the one hand, there's many commercial software, but also open source is used. In our project, we excluded the commercial software because of the high license fees the limited extendability, and yeah, it's not really possible to openly publish the models. We selected so far OpenFoam and Alma because uh, mainly of the feature set of the software, as well as our own experience and of course the active development. Furthermore, for our project, we selected some additional software, which is on the one hand Python as main programming language, GMesh for the mesh generation and ParaView para for post-processing. Furthermore, we are discussing currently 
the application of precise Phoenix and EOF library for coupling and additional simulations. Regarding the concept of the simulation, we want to build an easy-to-use Python interface where the geometry is defined, the simulation is set up, and there are some post-processing routines which can further be optimized with some predefined setups for large-scale parameter studies and so on. And yeah, this communicates with external tools, with GMesh for meshing, so far Ember for simulation, but later there will be some additional coupling, for example with Precise, and Paraview for simulation. So far this model includes the heat transfer, a bit electromagnetism and gas flow modeling, yeah, and melt and thermal stresses are under development. Looking in more detail at the implementation, there is the PyElma package, which includes a GMesh module for the geometry generation, an ELMA module for the object-oriented setup of the simulation, and some additional routines for execution and post-processing, as well as some predefined setups. This is already published and openly available on the Python package index. Furthermore, there is the OpenCGS package, which is focused on the application for crystal growth with a geometry mod module with predefined setups, a setup module where the simulation is set up, where you can just add the different bodies and boundaries, a simulation module for the simulation management, the execution of the solvers, and a control module to manage large-scale pa parameter studies. However, this is still a bit messy and has not been published yet. Now let's look at the transient heat transfer simulation in more detail. First is setup. Here you can see the whole domain um, with a zoom at the interesting part. It's all in 2D axisymmetric with the crystal there on the left side, the melt inside the crucible and the inductor for the heating, and it's all surrounded by air. Regarding the physics, we model the induction heating in the 2D axisymmetric harmonic case, the two-dimensional heat transfer, the phase change in steady state and the radiation at the solid air boundaries using view factors. Regarding the procedure of the transient simulation, as you already saw in the video of the process, the crystal is moving. That's why a mesh update is required. And yeah, we start the simulation with a simple steady state simulation for initialization. Then with this steady state simulation, a new mesh is generated with the new phase interface computed in the initialization. Um, a mesh to mesh interpolation is performed and the transient simulation is performed in which the mesh at the crystal is distorted. With this, a new mesh is generated after a certain time. Again, there's the interpolation and this goes on until the final length of the crystal is reached. And the Python framework just takes the output of the ELMA simulation and combines it to a whole result. Here you can see this. This is the mesh at the initial time, which is distorted. So the triangles are just getting longer. After a certain time, when the mesh is getting too bad, it is replaced by a new mesh, which is distorted again, and so on. Looking at the results, you can see a video of the transient simulation here, with the crystal on the left-hand side growing, and the mesh replaced step-by-step step in between. This simulation is numerically stable, and there are no errors introduced by the mesh update which I consider pretty nice. Um, the temperature that is also, so, also shown in the video is increasing 
with crystal lengths because of the stronger cooling at the um, surface of the crystal. This corresponds well to the experimental data, but of course there will be further validations required to validate the whole simulations. Challenges in future will be on the one hand to include the phase change dynamics, not just using the steady state phase change equation, and to allow for variable growth velocities. In future, we also want to include the fluid dynamics, and for this we plan to couple our ELMA simulation to open foam. Now, when we look at this coupling in more detail, there is the airflow in this part of the domain, which in simple steady state simulation may be coupled just with temperatures on the boundary, and the melt flow inside here, which may be coupled with temperatures on boundaries, but further requires a heat flux on the free surface, so at the melt air boundaries for the heat radiation, as well as a coupling of the electromagnetic forces due to the induction heating inside the volume of the melt. When it comes to the transient simulation, there are additional challenges. For example, the mesh deformation, which was shown in the previous slides, um, the different time scales of the high flow velocities and the low growth velocity of the crystal, and further problems may be due to the process control for variable crystal diameters and growth velocities. And with this, I'd like to come to the conclusion of my presentation. I showed the transient thermal simulation of the Chochalski growth process, which is controlled from Python and uses GMesh for mesh generation and ELMO for simulation. Its validation is promising but still ongoing. And yeah, there's currently a manual coupling between GMesh and ELMO. And one of the questions I'd like to discuss with you is there a possibility to do such things with Precise? Then looking at the plant coupling between ELMO and Open Foam. It is bidirectional on surfaces and in volumes and requires a coupling library. On the one hand, there is EOF library available, but it has limited flexibility and is only limited to AMA and open foam, so may not be used in further couplings, which may come up later in the project. That's why we want to use Precise but there is an ammo adapter required. Further challenges in the simulation of the Chochalski growth will be to include additional physics, for example, the thermal stretches, which were not touched yet, the three-dimensional modeling, and the process control simulation regarding variable crystal diameters or variable pole velocities, different heating concepts, and so on. And for this, we need to find the coupling frameworks that pro provides um, all, this all the flexibility to include these features. Thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the discussion.